Now, the second type of uh, differentiation between replication studies was proposed by Meikle uh, and colleagues in 2012, and also a similar one was proposed by Schmidt in 2009. Uh, they basically differentiate between two types of replication studies. One is direct replication, and the other one is conceptual replication, which, which also overlap with the Lycan's uh, way of looking at replication research. A direct replication refers to a condition in which no intentional or significant alterations of the initial study is applied. And by contrast, a conceptual replication refers to the uh, intentional adaptation of the, in, in, of the initial study to investigate uh, whether the results that were achieved in the first condition can be extrapolated to new conditions, new contexts, or new study characteristics. Uh, an example would be you claim or you find that previous researchers have used a certain, a certain approach to teach grammar because they claimed and they also pr pr provided evidence that this approach would result in the optimization of mm, language learners speaking ability. So teaching grammar in that way results in the optimization of speaking ability of language learners. Now what you're going to use here is just to go by the same hypothesis or the concept and rather than using exactly the same instruments or methodology to teach grammar or even teachers or students with similar profiles what you use is what you want to do is just to figure out whether in your context with your students with your instruments teaching grammar really results in the optimization of speaking skills of the students or or not so a lot of parameters are different and what is important here for you is just the concept or the hypothesis or if you will the claim or the theory that has emerged from a previous study rather than uh, you replicating the methods and instruments etc now another one Another way of looking at replication research has been proposed by uh, Port and Richards and it's more applicable to second language research and it's actually very similar to the two previous ones. Uh, they divide replication to three categories and one is literal or exact replication which as I mentioned before uh, under uh, Maykel and colleagues uh, direct replication there is no intentional or significant alteration and it's the same thing here now there is also another another way of replicating and that's partial or, or approximate replication uh, in this way you systematically replicate the previous study but some of the parameters may not necessarily be replicated <clears throat> for example your participants may not be exactly the same uh, if you have employed uh, if previous uh, researchers have uh, employed teachers those teachers would not be exactly the same teachers uh, uh, as those in your study so it's, it's like a partial or systematic replication of previous research and finally a constructive or conceptual replication replication which as I mentioned before refers to replicating the concepts or the theoretical uh, or hypothetical claims that emerged from previous studies rather than the methods and other parameters that previous research has used. Uh, now, the question is what kind of research might be suitable for replication? There are four uh, uh, guidelines here which I quickly go through and I think this will give us some ideas about what sort of research can be replicated. One is those studies which, which have a quantitative nature and have done hypothesis testing. Uh, in my view, it will be very difficult to replicate a study in a, in uh, which is qualitative, and because we most often talk about replication and and replicability uh, in terms of the effect size, you want to figure out if variable A affects variable B and to what extent, and so as you see it has there has to be some sort of measurement in replication or reproducibility research now according to Nosek and and Lakin's uh, 2013 paper uh, the sort of research that can be replicated uh, would be or would include important research or those that are often cited uh, or at this time
topic of intense scholarly or public interest or a challenge to establish theories that could be replicated. Uh, but these should also have uncertain truth values. And by that we mean that there are only few confirmations of that hypothesis, of that claim, or um, the effect sizes might be imprecise. And you want to replicate an initial or previous studies to find whether you can achieve the same effect sizes, or you can provide more confirmation, or perhaps I'd refute the claim that previous researchers have have made about something. The other criteria that we a criterion that we need to take into into account is that uh, research communities' view on what research needs to be replicated is important because it will inform everybody uh, what kind of research would result uh, would would contribute to uh, theory building or would contribute to making the available methods more precise or would contribute to uh, creating uh, better practices in the field. Finally, it's also not advisable to only replicate significant findings. You can actually aim for replicating null findings. A null finding is a finding which shows that there is no connection or relationship between two sets of variables or a number of variables. If you can replicate that in a different context, so you have actually shown that null findings make sense um, on in a different context as well. So this brings me to the end of this video. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, I hope you found it useful. Have a good day.